J.D. Vance's remarks bring immigration, national sovereignty, and cultural integration into sharp focus, emphasizing the need for strong border control, stricter enforcement, and curbing illegal immigration. His pointed criticism of Kamala Harris, accusing her of floating millions of illegal aliens into the country, reflects a broader conservative belief. Unchecked immigration burdens public services, destabilizes the economy, and chips away at a nation's cultural identity. This immigration and border issue every single day, because I've seen in the small town of Springfield, Ohio, or, or here uh, in Pennsylvania, there have been cities, small towns that have been overwhelmed with migrants who are brought in by Kamala Harris. And we know exactly the story. We know that it leads to a stress on local services. We know people can't get into the hospital or to the doctor's office. We know that schools don't educate children as well. And we know that it means higher housing and higher grocery prices. That's what Kamala Harris's open border does to small towns and big cities all over our country. But here's what really bothers me about it. It's not just that they've made people's lives worse with this terrible open border. It's that they're going to call you bad names if you dare complain about it. And so our message to Kamala Harris and the Democrats is we're going to keep on complaining about your policies because this is America and we have the right to speak our mind. And 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 our message, our, our simplified, sir, our message to Kamala Harris is very simple. We are not bad people for thinking that you should not flood millions of illegal aliens into this country. We are not bad people for thinking that the drug cartels shouldn't be allowed to bring fentanyl into our country. You are not a bad person for having the courage to defy Kamala Harris and say no more of this garbage. Kamala Harris is a bad person for letting this happen to our country in the first place. Vance's position also touches on a deeper ideological defense of conservative values, like freedom of speech and the right to dissent, especially when it comes to immigration policy. By framing the debate as a moral one, Vance seeks to reframe opponents of illegal immigration as rational, concerned citizens rather than as xenophobic or racist. This nuanced approach resonates with people who feel marginalized for their views, offering them a sense of validation. By doing so, he attempts to shift the conversation toward national interest and away from moral condemnation. His rhetoric brings the issue closer to home by highlighting towns like Springfield, Ohio, that feel overwhelmed by immigration, offering a relatable, localized example of how broader policies impact everyday Americans. This aligns with the conservative values of community and local governance, suggesting that immigration isn't just a federal issue but one that strains local schools, healthcare, and housing services. The underlying psychological elements of Vance's rhetoric tap into fear, identity, and empowerment. By pointing to cultural and economic disruption, crime, and the burden on public resources, he speaks to anxieties many feel about their future stability. For some, immigration becomes a symbol of larger societal shifts that threaten their way of life. Vance's rhetoric offers a clear channel for these fears directing frustration outward at visible political figures and policies, such as those represented by Harris. This externalization of blame allows individuals to turn their personal anxieties into political action, providing them a sense of closure and the belief that the problem is one of policy, not personal failure.